Okay, I've gone ahead and before we get started uh, with the new material, uh, let's go ahead and try another uh, antiderivative. So here we have the sine of theta plus the sine of theta times tangent squared divided by secant squared. So how are we going to deal with this? Yeah, you should be thinking to yourself, well, we need to deal with the integrand first, right? That's this function. This is the integrand. And so we should try to simplify that before we get started. Because one thing right off the bat, right, 1 over secant squared is what? Cosine squared, that's right. So we could go ahead and move that. So um, maybe I'll write it over here. So instead of 1 over secant squared, we'll have cosine squared. Then we'll have uh, sine of theta plus now sine of theta. And then tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. OK. And now, uh, let's see. What can we do? Um, well, we can multiply this through, right? That would be sine cubed. So we, then we'd end up with sine theta cosine squared theta plus sine cubed theta. Good. Hmm, I have a common theta, a uh, sine theta here I could pull out just for fun. Actually, do you see what's going to happen then? What is sine squared plus cosine squared? That's equal to 1. That's right. And so this whole thing just collapsed to just the sine of theta. Good. And so that's going to be minus cosine theta plus c. Good. All right. Um, so <clears throat> there are some applications that we should talk about. Um, and this is really just something called the net rate of change theorem or the net change theorem. And the idea here is that um, if f, well, just given the function f of x, given uh, f of x, f prime of x represents what? The rate of change of f, right? So for example, if f of x was um, volume, then f prime of x would be like the change in the volume. If f of x was population, f prime of x represents how the population is evolving in time or changing in time, right? And so f prime of x is the rate of change. Good. Then by the FTC, the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you integrate from a to b f prime of x dx, uh, what do you get? We get the antiderivative, which is f evaluated at b, minus the antiderivative at a. And this is the net change of f from a to b. Right? So, for example, <clears throat> if f of x is the population at time x, then f prime is the rate of change of that. And so if you integrate from a to b, this is the population at time b minus the population at time a. So that's the net change in the population from time a to time b. Good. Um, let's try some more. So uh, one from the book is the with the volume. So if v of t is the volume of water at time t, <clears throat> then v prime of t is the rate of change. Well, it's the rate uh, at which the water is changing, water volume is changing. So, for example, if it was negative, we'd be losing volume. If it was positive, we'd be gaining volume. And so, therefore, if we look at the integral from a to b of e prime of t dt, that's the volume at time b minus the volume at time a. Good, so that is the net change in the volume. Good. 
There's some others uh, in the book that you might take a look at. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see. Um, we might be looking at some of those uh, in the homework. I just wanted to, uh, I think, jump to one more uh, application. So this is the net change. This is net change theorem. And the next one is really just kind of an observation that we made before, but I wanted to really kind of emphasize that. And that is uh, the difference in physics between distance and displacement. Uh, displacement or position, I should say. Okay, so for example, we were talking about the mouse on a little wire, or I guess it was a bug on a wire. Um, and we've, we had some velocity curve, right? And so suppose that our velocity curve looks like this, right? And so remember that like velocity up means going to the right, velocity down means going to the left. And so uh, this signed area has meaning, right? So, for example, this area right here, this A1, would mean the, um, that would mean distance to the right. And then down here, we'd have some area, that would be A sub 2. But this would be represented by negative. If we made that positive, right, that would be like area, net area to the left that we traveled. And then we had area 3 here. That would be positive. And so, if this is our velocity function here, then the integral from a to b, let's, well, let's go from 0 to 0 to 10 of our velocity function. All right, that's going to be a1 minus a2 minus a2. I'm thinking of a2 as a positive number because it's area plus a3, and that is the displacement, right? The net displacement over time. Um, net displacement meaning, you know, right is positive and left is negative. Good. And then if I wanted to find the distance, that would be the absolute value of the velocity. And so that would be a1 plus a2 plus a3. And so this would be distance traveled. And so you'll notice that this is speed, right? Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Good. So let's uh, maybe continue with this. And suppose that my velocity is uh, oh, t squared plus 3t minus 4. OK. Um, and our t is running from 0 to 3. Find the displacement, the, really the net displacement, uh, up to time 3 and the distance traveled. Good. So, um, to start with, it might be good to visualize this a little bit. This is a parabola. Uh, does that parabola factor at all? I think. Oops, 3t minus 4. Uh, let's see. T, minus, uh, t plus 4 minus 1. So t equals minus 4 and positive 1 are the two zeros of the function, right? So, one, two, three, four, one. Uh, I've got a positive t squared here, so that means the function looks like this. Right, but we're interested in the time from zero to three, right? So my displacement would just be the integral from zero to three t squared plus 3t minus 4 dt. 
right? And so I just anti-differentiate, one third t cubed plus three t squared minus four t, evaluate from zero to three. Let's see, what's this? what is that going to be? 3 cubed over 3 is 3 squared, so that's 9 plus, um, that's 3 cubed, right? 27 minus 4 times 3 is 12. Oop, I uh, better watch myself here. I see an error. Uh, if that's t squared, that needs to have a divided by 2 there, so that's divided by 2. Good. And now if you sum all that together, we end up with uh, 21 over 2. Good. Now let's compare that to the distance. So uh, notice that I can take the distance to be the integral from 0 to 1 of minus the velocity, right? Because this curve is now minus, so I need to flip that up. And so that would be minus t squared plus 3t minus uh, plus 4 dt. And then we would have plus the integral from 1 to 3 of the positive velocity. Oops. Minus 4. Good. And so then we have minus one third. Well, we already have our antiderivatives, right? So it's just a matter of um, plugging everything in. Um, minus 4t plus 4t. And then that goes from 0 to 1 plus 1 third t cubed plus 3 halves t squared minus 4t from 1 to 3. And so if you do plug all that in, since we're running a little short of time, I think we end up with uh, 89 over 6 on your calculator. Good. All right, so um, that is the difference between, so what does this uh, mean just before we go? That is the area between here and here. <clears throat> well, this is the displacement. Right, so if we were going left and right, right, then the uh, we would be like going left for a little while, from time one to time or time zero to time one, and we'd be going right for a while, time till time three. We would end up at like right, twenty-one over two units overall. So this was to be our net displacement. Okay, I better get uh, out of here. Uh, we'll just try a few more examples. Um, and then uh, start something else on the in the next video.